our next president walks out here and she talks about freedom, she means the freedom to make your own health care decisions. We trust women to know what is in their best interest and not have their government telling them what to do. Harrison Walls there on that big issue. We're back with Juanita and Eleanor. This abortion rights issue is big on the campaign trail. Trump, meanwhile, on defense, he wouldn't even say how he would vote or what his stance is as a leader on Florida's abortion referendum. Remember, he lives there. Uh, DeSantis has this abortion ban that could actually get overturned in November, even in that relatively conservative state. And in those remarks I mentioned yesterday, Trump was also asked about banning the abortion medication. Here was his answer. Would you direct your FDA, for example, to revoke access to mifeprestone? That's one of the things so that's you been could, discussed. So you could do things that will be, would, would supplement, absolutely. And those things are pretty uh, open and uh, humane. But you have to be able to have a vote. And all I want to do is give everybody a vote. And the votes are taking place right now as we speak. Yeah. But it's a very good. There are many things on a humane basis that you can do outside of that. No. <laughs> no. I don't I don't think he knew what mifeprestone is. That part. Yeah. And so he was just I don't want to call it winging it because he was it was word salad. Hmm. But Who's the first vote? word was sure. Yeah. The first word was sure. And we know in Project 2025 it says um, overturn access to abortion medication and stop allowing access by mail of abortion medication. It's all written there. Yeah. And you add that to the fact that he appointed three yeah. anti-choice Supreme Court justices with the explicit intention of overturning Roe. Of course, this is his plan. Yeah. On policy, they did this. Those are his judges. And he mm -hmm. campaigned on it. On politics, even <laughs> Donald Trump seems aware, you saw it in the body language, yeah. of, well, don't make a headline about that. Right. Uh, you're already losing on this issue. Right. Because if he had his, his, if he had it his way, abortion wouldn't even be a word that is allowed to be spoken on the campaign trail. Yeah. And conversely, you have Harris and Waltz who are drilling this home every single time they address voters because yeah. they know how much of a mobilizing issue it is, right. has been in 2022 and 2023 yeah. when voters cross partisan lines and demographic yeah. lines to support its codification in their state constitutions. Right. Well, uh, Trump is stuck with the fact that he named the three Supreme Court justices right. who did this. So he wants to portray it as a victory. He says everybody wanted Roe overturned, which is not not no. true. And he, he would be happy if he could just say, leave it to the states, we could forget about it. But there are too many states who are going to push it further in the, in the draconian uh, direction, and he's going to be tagged with that. He seems to think it's not going to be a volatile issue in November. Uh, it's going to drive a lot of votes. It's the number one issue. And I, I really do think the women of America, and men too, because it's part of the freedom issue. And I love the fact that the Democrats are now, there, there's a broader umbrella of freedom issues. You know, freedom to mind your own business is also yes. uh, part of that. So, um, and they talk about abortion as reproductive health care. And so I, I think the Democrats have an advantage on this. But the Republicans have an advantage on on, on immigration, and Harris went directly at them with an ad this week. She's not afraid of the border issue. She says just because we're compassionate doesn't mean we're not we're not strong. But that's a, a Karl Rove technique where you go right yeah, at you your right opponent's strength. Yeah, yeah don't so wait for them to bring it I'm up. I'm really pleased to, yeah, to see that well, as you, well. And it's interesting, you mentioned immigration. Uh, we had one of Trump's longest serving White House advisors, Stephen Miller, on mm -hmm. this week. We talked about immigration and what you brought up, 25. Mm -hmm. And again, you have to fact check and you have to deal with these things, but it is striking. Uh, both to get people on record and get them out of the bubble so you can have what we do here, journalistic adversarial questioning, and also that they are at least running from or pretending that they don't want to be about right. 25 anymore. Right. Here's just a brief uh, exchange I had with Stephen Miller. Mm -hmm. Project 2025 has absolutely nothing to do with the past, present, or future. President Trump and President Trump alone will make his own policies. I can assure you that Nobody involved in working on Project 2025 in any substantive fashion is going to be involved in any future policy decision. You just said that. The president's, the former president said that, as I mentioned. Uh, there are issues where we see uh, a kind of overlap. President Trump is sui generis. He is President Trump. He has his own agenda that is his and his alone. Eleanor? President Trump does not like immigrants. Uh, I think we could be confident, if he is elected, that there would be 
some roundups and there would be some deportations. I mean, he's on record for that repeatedly. And look what he tried to do when he first won in 2016 and 27 in the Muslim bans. Uh, this is what he is about from the minute he came down the escalator. And the speeches about they are sending us their, <laughs> they're emptying their insane asylums. So I don't, I don't trust him to be at all middle of the road on this. In fact, I trust him more on, on uh, the abortion issue because he sees that as a political loser. The only way he would go further to the right on that as president would be if there is a Republican legislature and they all vote for this and he's driven into it. Otherwise, he, you're right, he doesn't want to even talk about it. Right. Yeah, but and immigration, mm, he's, he's got a lot of <laughs> ideas on that one. Yeah, and, and Juanita, campaigns are also an information and education process. Yes. And here we've added Harris later than usual, so people are learning about her. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Those who already know about her or like her might say, oh, well, this is so great. Mm -hmm. Saying it's great or whatever you think it is, good or bad, is based on what you already know about her. Right. And a lot of people in the country don't. Likewise, Project 25 has started to get enough attention that mm -hmm. they're running from it. But as we showed uh, when I was fact-checking Mr. Miller, I, I showed multiple parts of the GOP platform mm -hmm. right. that already overlap right. on abortion, uh, on the immigration issue we discussed at length. Again, as I always say, people make up their own minds, mm -hmm. but it's important to make sure, especially people who've been busy or tired by right. politics, inflation, and COVID. Or who aren't going to read 900 pages of or a Or aren't going to read it all. Yeah. Um, this is actually tied to them, and if even they won't stand on it, right. that might tell you something. Because the, the other reality here that I hope came up in that conversation with Stephen Miller was that it was written by former Trump White House yeah. staffers who are jockeying now internally at Heritage Foundation for who will lead if Trump is elected again in his White House. So the reality that the, the attempt by Stephen Miller to say, oh, this isn't us, we didn't have fingerprints on it. They explicitly did. I appreciate you for calling that out. But I think voters also need to understand that those same people who wrote this, who the RNC lifted pieces of it for their 16-page platform, right. will absolutely be trying to impl implement this if Trump is elected. The threat is real. The threat is present.